Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council, navigating the human experience together. Hafadeh Tiro, and welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Perry, and today I'm excited to introduce a new series we're doing here on the show. It's giving us insight into the many cultures that make up our Marianas community through stories, legends, uh, folk tales. And here to kick off our series with us, it's my pleasure to have Tatiana Ilmov. Tatiana, welcome. Thank you for having me today. So happy to uh, be starting this series with you and to learning more about your culture. You've brought a lot of beautiful things to help tell your story. Start us off with where you're from and a little bit about your country. Uh, we came from Russia 14 years ago. And I'm really proud of our country and our culture and our people. And um, we came here on island just for vacation and we've fallen in love in this island. It's not beautiful, just in, like naturally beautiful, but it's also the beauty of this island. The, the biggest beauty of this island is this island's people. I think um, it's always open for every, that's why our island is so multicultural, I think, because it's open for everyone and everybody welcome and everybody will be treated uh, coming from who they are, not where they come from. That's mm -hmm. what I love about island. And um, we live in here for 14 years and we're really, really grateful that this island welcomed us and our kids uh, was born. Some of our kids, one of our daughter come with, came with us and two others was born here. So this is their home. Mm. Well, you're part of what makes the Marianas community beautiful. So thank you for all you and your family do. Um, you're a teacher for the Russian school, uh, which is very important. And you have brought some, I guess you could call it iconic items uh, from a Russian household. Can you share with us uh, what you have here and how it ties into your yes, country's absolutely. history? Yes, absolutely. I would um, tell that I will start my stories from that our country have a big history. Our country's history is more than a thousand years old and as you can imagine when someone have such a big history, some country have such a big history, they have really a lot to share and lots to offer. And um, our country nowadays contains from lots of cities and villages also, but back just 150 years ago, it was mostly villages. So people lived very connected to nature. Um, back then we have just few big cities, but all other our huge country was um, populated with people who live in the villages and was connected to nature in so many different ways. Um, they never had a stores like we would have. If they want to eat or cook their dinner, they need to grow their food and harvest this and make, make sure they uh, conserve it or preserve that for whole winter. And our winter is really, really, um, hard so it's really cold there um, so life in Russia just hundreds years ago was not an easy task but people our people is very strong and their strengths come not just from the nature and environment but also a mental strengths I think come from how creative our people um, hundreds years ago when it not lots of things was available they loved to decorate their houses and they loved to spend long winters evenings by creating something that will um, have in this house for generation like all our uh, bedwares was uh, hand crocheted 
Wow. Even back then, yes, when people, you would think the life is so hard, why you think about to decorate your pillowcase? But no, it's the most beautiful uh, bedwares from the, back from their days. And um, same with um, tableware. It's so many different techniques how they decorate it. And this is where the traditional souvenirs that we have in nowadays, that um, lots of them I brought today, that's where they came from. Can you describe them for Absolutely. us? Absolutely. So there is a few, ma there is lots of different techniques and lots of different um, things um, from different cities. Mostly it's connected to certain region. Hmm. But one of the most important um, gel and hachlama. So uh, I will start from my favorite. I love hachlama technique. And hachlama technique, um, it's mostly table wares. They have wooden spoon, wooden uh, plates. This one is for tea. And this is more modern, but still it's decorated in Hachlama technique, which is very old technique. And the key point for that technique, you ha they have a black background, and then all decorations will be with gold and red and white and green. So only these kind of colors um, they would have in their decorations. And I feel it's so beautiful at the same time it's so cozy for me and so warm i love the feeling when i look at this kind of uh table wares it's bring me such a joyful pleasant warm feeling and what kind of paint do they use for these colors this is real gold this oh. is what they use it's a like mm, like a dust gold dust okay. they would mix it and they will paint it with real gold so this would call hachlama Hachlama. Hachlama. All right. So, um, oh, here. This is um, most most of the hachlama um, pieces would would be wooden. They create it from wood and then they decorate it with the. And this is like a napkin holder. Yes, this mm -hmm. is a napkin holder. Very beautiful. And um, the other very famous technique, it's called gel. Gel is yeah. always a porcelain. Um, it's interesting that you call it China here in, in <laughs> States, right? Um, for us, porcelain, uh, I know it was created in China, that's how everybody knows, but porcelain was really popular in Russia as well. So um, it's a porcelain tableware and it's decorated, uh, it's always white and decorated with just one color, blue. Hmm. Always blue? Always blue. So it's only white and blue combination. And all of what we, you can see in front of us today, that's all hand painted, even nowadays. Most of the gel uh, tableware that you will see in store, that would be hand painted. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's why it's right now, n nowadays it's pretty costly. But even back then, only rich families can afford those kind oh. of... Uh, tableware in their houses for the um, for the villages they mostly would use a wooden wooden tableware with different kind of decorations mm -hmm. so this is absolutely my favorite things about our culture how creative they are and even to create um, children's toys I think everybody sh uh, saw those kind of souvenirs that's called matryoshka 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 was created to be played for kids, and it's nesting nesting doll. Nesting dolls, yes. Yes, and uh, first of all, it's really give child a sense of uh, size and give them a lot to understand the size and measure and how to combine them. So it's really development toys, but also the background uh, behind that it's very symbolic. It's always woman. Um, in um, this one, I, I would say the most traditional. This is more fancy and modern. This is more traditional. It's always a woman in a traditional attire dress. Mm -hmm. It's a tie dress, and it's also on a hat. I don't know. they like um, um, I don't know. The scarf English, or like something. Like a scarf yeah. that they most of our ladies in villages they would wear it always on their hats. 
So that represent that um, woman is the one who give uh, birth to other generations. So okay. that represent um, an idea of uh, continuation on life is coming from the woman. Can you open it up? I haven't looked at one for a long time. Are they all identical? They all identical. Most of them are under Except in size, mm -hmm. of course. <laughs> yes. And then they, they perfectly fit inside each other. Um, and the size of this can be really dramatic. When wow. I was really, really small, maybe two years old, I was visiting my dad in St. Petersburg and one of his friends have Matryoshka will have 50 pieces. It was, even though I was so small, it was one of the brightest experience <laughs> in my life to have 50. And the last one, the, the first one was maybe this big. Yeah. And the last, last one was like a match, like a oh, piece wow. of, small piece of match, but it was still decorated, have eyes and everything. So it's, it, this is pretty impressive. And this is, this matryoshka that I'm holding in my hands is my favorite favorite toy of my kids. So you can see that it have lots of cracks and everything because this is their favorite. I have three daughters and all of them played with her. And it's, it's really it's, their it's favorite. It's kind of like irresistible once you start because you're like, oh, it's I want to really see the next one. I want to see the next. How, well, how much smaller is it going to yes, get? Yes, it's really yeah. entertaining. So this is the smallest one. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is minuscule. That's like yeah. smaller than your pinky. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like it's one really, joint of your really thumb. Cute, so really tiny. Small. Wow. So yes, it's it's keep them entertained, and again, it's 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 really great um, toy for development. Is there any well. kind of tradition related to this? Like, oh, when there's a housewarming or a new baby or something like that, you give actually this not doll? this this toy is pretty modern. So okay. it was created in 19, 1890s. Mm -hmm. And it was created for kids to play. So they, in 1890s, they felt suddenly that our uh, culture have to um, get restored and we we'll need to make sure that all our um, amazing techniques implement somewhere. So they start creating lots of different varieties of toys or tablewares and Matryoshka one, one, was one of them. It was a creation. And actually it's very popular in Japan because in back then, 200 years ago, one of the Japanese um, adventurers came to Russia and they saw it. So when they come back to Japan, they replicated they replicate it. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Matryoshka is really popular in Japan as well. Well, we're, uh, we are chatting today with Tatiana Ilmov about Russian culture and stories. We'll be back with more after this break. Half a day, Zantiro. I'm Leo Pangilinan with the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. We'd like to take a moment to thank our generous sponsors who have made possible the many programs in our community like this show. We couldn't have done it without them. And if you value the work we do and would like to make a contribution to our efforts, we ask that you consider making an in-kind or cash contribution to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Any amount is appreciated, and donations of up to $5,000 qualify for an educational tax credit. We appreciate your partnership and support. Sizus maasi, olomai, and thank you. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. We are storytelling with various cultures here in our community, beginning uh, this series with stories from Russia and Tatiana Ilma. Tatiana, uh, you have a number of very interesting books here. I love books, I love storytelling, and I understand you're gonna start us off with your personal favorite. I I'm ready to sit back and just listen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, um, fairy tales is a big part of our culture. Again, because I think our ancestors was connected to nature so dramatically back then, and they um, find that amazing way to teach our kids 
with a different um, thoughts that they have to carry in their life by this amazing um, st storytelling um, way. I think our uh, storytelling um, tradition is one of the um, smartest way to continue our cultural beliefs in our future generation. I love storytelling. When we, when we arrive here uh, on island, after a few years, we decide to open Russian school. And we open the school mostly to, to give opportunities for children who, are, who came from families half Russian or fully Russian to experience our culture. And it's a Saturday school and in our school, of course, I teach them how to write and read, but one of our lessons is always about our culture, about our traditions. And especially first few years when they just start to come to school, we always um, reading a story. I always read a story tale for them. And Russian story tales, we have we have so many of them. We have hundreds of story tales, and most of them really the, nobody knows who was the of, o, author of those stories. So they really come from them, from people and. Uh, at the beginning, they was transferred mouth to mouth. Mm -hmm. There was no written version. So mm. nowadays, when we read the same story, but from the different publisher, it can be different mm. slightly because there is no one way to tell mm -hmm. this story. Mm -hmm. It's basically my grandma tell me this way, his grandma tell him that way. So it's always a small uh, vari variation of those stories. But at the same time, the key point of the story is always the same. And that's impressive also how they survive for so many years without be publishing and come to our days basically fully created how it was at the beginning, most of, most of them. Um, our fairy tales have, some of them are very simple for younger kids. And some of them are really complicated and have lots of what's going on in that storytelling. Mm -hmm. And they're very long. And there, there is movies created based mm. on that fairy tales. So what is so, the one you're going to share with us? Is um, it a complicated one or is it a I short? will share the simplest one and it's my favorite and I will tell you why. Yes. But before <laughs> I'll do that, I really want to tell that our fairy tales is, um, have a different ways to create them. So we have fairy tales that about um, our regular life, day-to-day -day life. So it's about humans in their routines, uh, how they lived in villages and what they, how they was working. Way of life. Yes, and, yeah. and uh, telling us about their, their way of life. Some of them, the main character, and it's really a lot of them, the main character would be animals. And really? Yes, and in that animal story, uh, there is a part in, like, through those animals, we will um, the um, story tale will demonstrate how you have to behave or what should you avoid. And in those stories, there is a part and also um, like for example, fox and wolf and bear would have always the same personality. Like fox would be very tricky, of course. Mm -hmm. The wolf would be um, easy to trick. It's really? easy to trick okay, him. He's okay. not very smart. The bear, he's big, but also he is the one who would not be very bright. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, with their interaction, that's how adults would help kids to understand how they have to pursue in their life. And it's 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 really it's very fun way to see if children understand and uh, after a few fairy tales they already know that folks it's somebody you have you can up trust. to something yeah 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 <laughs> and etc so my personal uh, favorite so this is fairy tales book of, from of my kids I can see that and it's quite see, worn <laughs> yes and you can see how <laughs> how much they loved it yes how much they loved it it's almost every evening they like to read the fairy tales from these stories and as you can see first of all it's very beautifully illustrated but 
this is what I'm saying. This is lots of animals inside um, as a ca main as character characters. of Alpha Fairy Tales. But lots of them about humans as well. May I see? Absolutely. Uh, my absolutely favorite fairy, fairy tale is called the turnip. If you translate it, it's called turnip. And this is a story how grandpa planted the turnip, but it's overgrown. It's grown so huge, so big, that he, when he start to, when he, when he want to pull it, he, he was not able to do it himself. So he called grandma. And then they pulled together. It, that, it was not working. So he called her granddaughter. And then they called dog and cat and mouse, mice. And then as soon as mice came and they pull all together, it's all worked out. They was able to pull it and have it for them. I think, um, and this is the thing about our Russian fairy tales. It's always have a bit like you can analyze the story, every story. So you will sit together with children after and say, what do you think? What this story teach us? And they would say, yes, we can see that even the small person in a family, in a country, their work is important. Doesn't matter how small you are or who you are in this society. If you really try and your best, if you really try and your hardest, you can really bring a difference in everybody's life. Mm. That's what I love about this story. So when we finish to read the story with our students, we always will tell that sometimes you children, you think you, I'm too small to influence something. You always have to see yourself as a person who can bring changes. If you're very passionate about something or if you agree or disagree with something, you have to raise your voice and you say, I don't think it's right. Or I think uh, if I will work harder here, I can really bring a difference. So why is this your favorite story? That's what I love. That's what I'm saying. Everything what I said right now, I feel that it's really powerful, even though it's so simple. And yes. it's so it's also have in Russian language when they do in this process, like grandpa called grandma and grandma called granddaughter it's a it's a, like a rhyme and it's so suiting rhyme yes, it's, and it's continuation of the same yes, absolutely yes. it's it's like it's like a lullaby in certain mm -hmm. way it's really mm -hmm. calm you down and help you to see life on a bigger scale mm -hmm. I love this story. There is lots of lots of beautiful stories. I even have can, yeah. Can you share another one with us? Mm -hmm. I even have a book. Our friends gave it this book to us a um, few years ago. They brought it from states. Fairy tales, Russian fairy tales, and it, this book is in English. So when it's really hard for our students to understand a plot of the story, if Sometimes um, students who come to Russian school, they um, they can speak and understand Russian. Sometimes they just start into learn Russian language. So um, if this, the fairy tale is too complicated, I can give them to read it in English. And At least it'll will. spark an yes. interest and yes, a pride. Absolutely. Like you said, you're trying to make them proud of their absolutely, heritage. Absolutely, yes. So lots of different stories. Um, I think I will share one more maybe from this book and I think you might be, um, this is something you might know, um, Masha and the Bear. It's a very famous cartoon now, really, uh, even abroad, even here. So we can see it on television. This is um, a story about little girl who lost in a forest. Okay. And she was trying to find... Um, a way to her house, but unfortunately, instead of find um, her village, she found a um, house of somebody. So she entered, and it turned out that it was a house of a huge bear. And that bear decided, okay, that's good. I'm so lucky. You're now gonna work for me. You're gonna <laughs> cook and clean the house oh, and no. etc. So she she did it for a while, but then she really she was so smart. So she come um, with the idea that she will bake a lot of. Um, we have a Russian traditional dish. Uh, it's like a pie, but in a small scale. We call it pirashki. Okay. So she bake lots of small pies and put them in a. Uh, on the top of her hat, 
and sit in this and she convinced Bear just to give it to my parents so they know I'm okay. Oh. Just bring it to the village and give this to my parents. But then she hide inside. In the basket. The yes, and she said, basket. make sure you don't eat from this oh, basket okay. while you're going. And he said, yes, yes, of course. But he tried to eat several times, but she said, I will sit in the top of the house and will watch all the way you're going. So make sure you're not eating. So whenever he was trying to eat, she said, I'm sitting very high and looking at you and I, I see that you're trying to sneak in this basket. <laughs> so he said, yeah, yeah, okay. So he brought her eventually home. It's a beautiful story, but now they made a, a, a nice cartoon, funny cartoon about Masha and the bear. They are friends and she's giving him a hard time most of the time. <laughs> like kids give sometimes hard time to their parents. So what do you get from that story or what do you talk about with your kids for them I to understand? I think it's very important never give up. So even though mm -hmm. she was in that situation when it was very hard not to give up, she find the solution for herself to get home. Always try to think around the situation, always try to find a solution that will work for you. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, what is it you hope people will get from the work that you do, uh, both as the family that comes to your school and learns the language, learns the culture, and how it benefits our community as a whole? I think for every child who growing in a family from different um, cultural backgrounds. It's very important to be connected with their cultures. So if if this is a child who, who raised in a family with Russian and local um, parents, this is so important for them to know both, both cultures because it's their identity and the more child connected to their own, to their own roots, uh, first of all, the more self-confident this child growing because when you're proud of where you come from you can accomplish much more in this life and our culture is really Russian culture is a culture that we should be proud of um, I think um, our history have such a long um, period of time and in this period of time we collect so much wisdom in our fairy tales especially that it's so important to um, give this wisdom to our future generation to make sure it's not lost on us it's really continuous and it, it's continuous in a way when we proud of where we come from and I think it's not only about Russian families I think um, Chamorro or Carolinian families they um, the proudness of how their culture is beautiful should live in their children. Absolutely. I like how like everything that you're saying can be applied to so many of the mm -hmm. cultures that are here about wanting to pass on your heritage to your children. Thank you very much. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we go? Um, I want to thank you very much for um, inviting me today and I want to thank uh, people on this island to be in so hospitality for every culture that come in uh, on island and there is I don't think that lots of places can say that there is so much support that you will feel as a foreigner on the, our beautiful island and I'm so uh, grateful for that and our family always try to pay back in a different ways my husband is a Rotarian and he doing lots of volunteer work um, I'm a head of uh, Islam Montessori school right now and we are Montessori school who not only um, um, offer a Montessori education but we try to connect a Montessori education with Chamorro and Carolinian culture Everything what I spoke today about is really, um, I have a strong feeling about that. And I think that the more we will give an opportunity to our children to know their own roots, their own culture, the brighter they will be. And the, um, really that 
all that wisdom that was collected our, by our ancestors, they, they should, it should be continued in our, in our children. Thank so. you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, too. Our guest today has been Tatiana Ilmov. She's been sharing about Russian stories and Russian culture. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. Your Humanities Half Hour has been made possible in part by a major grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Democracy demands wisdom. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities. For more information or to share your thoughts, contact the Northern Marianas Humanities Council at nmhcouncil.org or on social media at 670 Humanities, that's 670 Humanities. <laughs>